Hallo aus Wien. A very warm welcome to today's keynote speech. I hope you really enjoy Gecko so far. I really like the idea of Gecko and that's why I'm supporting this activity from the beginning in 2012. Um, I personally would really have loved to get this opportunity myself a couple of years uh, to participate in this competition and to try out things that I can't do in my normal job. So this is also the most important advice uh, of this keynote speech. Please try everything within Gecko that you can't do in your normal job. So who am I? My name is Iris Haug. I'm a certified senior project manager and a project coach. And I've been working in the project management field for almost 15 years now. I'm employed at Bivin Party, which is an online gaming company, and I work sideline on a self-employed basis as a project coach. My experience results from managing projects in the IT, marketing, and online gaming business. And these projects range from organization development projects, software and web application projects, but also very marketing focused projects. And all of them are either done in an international environment or uh, in an intercultural team. Bivin developed from a very small company with only one office in Vienna to an international company with offices around the globe, ranging from an office in the US uh, around, uh, also Europe and also in Asia in India. Uh, and in parallel to this regional expansion, you can imagine the way, the way of working changed dramatically during the years. At the beginning, communication was dominated by meetings, informal uh, alignments at the coffee machine, and of course we sent emails around, used instant messaging tools, and did a lot of phone calls. Then, after an acquisition of uh, a subsidiary in Stockholm, uh, traveling came quite popular and people were flying around uh, very frequently. And now, in today's situation, uh, virtual meetings are the normal day-to-day uh, -day business. Uh, and the big challenge now is um, to transfer the things that prove to work well in face-to-face -face meetings uh, to this virtual environment. And that's also um, the experience that I'd like to share with you in today's sessions. So coming to the next slide, um, all of us uh, use the internet for communication today. We either send emails, use instant messaging tools, or do video or phone calls but most of the time with people that we know quite well and that we have met in person before. Also, all of us have friends with a different cultural background, another mother tongue or uh, who, that live in the same country or that live abroad uh, so that we only meet them rare, uh, from time to time. But putting all these aspects into the work context, um, the situation is, is, is very different. We are confronted with a lot of strangers. So imagine that someone is working in another location, is also probably from another country, with an other cultural background, with different professional knowledge, and most probably is also living in another time zone. And here we are, so welcome in my daily work environment. It must also be very similar uh, uh, to what you experience now in your Gecko team. And this makes it really interesting. What does all this mean for working together? For achieving a project goal and deliver something together, if you are that distributed and that uh, different. So I have now prepared some tips for virtual meetings. Um, and uh, which I would like to share with you. So first of all, how does such a virtual meeting look like? What you can see here, unfortunately the quality is not really that good, um, but it, it is the same um, as in our video conferencing tool. You can see at the top a very big screen uh, with the video uh, of the room where you are located at the moment. 
And at the bottom, you see the other participants uh, that are dialing in from the different uh, locations. What you can also see here is very often the pictures of the people are very small because you are, in addition, sharing a desktop presentation, um, yeah, which reduces the size uh, of the, the movies. On the right-hand side, uh, you can also see the participants that are dialed in. Uh, we are using here the, the software of Blue Jeans, which is quite comfortable and, and very easy to use. Good, so what are the actual tips for the virtual meetings? For me, the most important one and the really uh, critical one for success is um, the system configuration. So the meeting can be structured in the best way uh, and uh, with, the, with the best outcome, but if the system is not working and people are not used how to use the system, so how they dial in, how they control their screens, how they uh, mute their microphones and, and so on, um, you won't be successful. So this is the first uh, thing you should do. So please check with the participants in advance on an individual basis, uh, the system setup. So if you do this once, uh, it will save you a lot of time uh, in the future. Then another aspect is um, bundle the people in as less locations as possible. So it's not necessary if, for example, two people are dialing in from London, that both of them are sitting in front of their computer. It's much uh, more efficient and also uh, supports the, the whole aspect around team building if those two people are booking a room and sitting next to each other or just um, sit in front of one computer. The third and also very important aspect is you have to prepare very well in advance the agenda. And you also have to send out some documents to the people. So for example, if something doesn't work with the screen sharing and you have to start sending out the presentation to everyone, um, you will lose a lot of time. So if this is sent out with the agenda, upfront, uh, you can save a lot of time. The people have the presentation available at their hand. They can do a printout or can open it on the screen in parallel because what you saw before, sometimes it's very small, uh, the, the desktop sh sharing part of the screen share. Timekeeping is another uh, very important aspect and uh, what goes in hand with the timekeeping is you will always have some uh, time at the beginning um, where you have to wait until all the participants have dialed in. In most cases, you are the one that open uh, the virtual meeting. So uh, unless you are dialed in, nobody else can uh, interact within this conference. You are always the first one. And then it takes appro approximately 10 minutes until everyone is really dialed in, until the system is working for everyone. And these 10 minutes is also the time if people are used to video conferencing systems. So also uh, consider this in your time planning, um, that you have enough time available for really the content of the meeting. Um, then it's also important to make an introduction round. You can use uh, the the the, the waiting time, so to say, um, for socializing and to, to yeah, do kind of a warm up. But then afterwards, make an introduction round that everyone knows who is participating in this call. Sometimes the video camera is not working for some participants and they only join via audio signal. Uh, then it's even more important to know who is there and also to make everyone speak and to check if the microphone is working. And to clarify the roles of the people. So it's very important that everyone knows who is the moderator, who is taking minutes or in which role the person is participating. Then something else that goes uh, in line or along with this role definition is uh, setting rules for this meeting. In virtual meetings, it's very important that everyone um, waits until the other 
person finished uh, talking because you also have this time delay and if you are not waiting uh, until the other person really stopped talking you will always um, um, stop the person from talking and uh, um, yeah it's very impolite so please arrange rules with the other ones um, I also like uh, the rule uh, that people are not doing something else because it's already very hard to concentrate uh, and I think it's good to explicitly mention that as well. This is also something with uh, keeping the attention of the people. So asking them, them from time to time about uh, their opinion so that they feel involved and do, that you are not the only one talking uh, the whole meeting. And that's also something that you can easily remember with this last icon. So you have to do in this virtual meeting something for the eyes. So present them something that they can see something. Um, <coughs> talking, you, most of the time uh, somebody will talk, but uh, as I said before, sometimes it can be hard to understand the other person because of uh, connection issues. And the third important thing is um, make them active during the meeting. So give them the chance to do something Either ask them to write something down or to give feedback um, where they also probably have to take some notes or send you an email in parallel uh, to the session so that they are really doing something. So for example, in relation to this slide, I could have said in advance that I will present you now a couple of tips and please take, take notes uh, so that you can easily give feedback later on um, and so on, for example. Yeah, that's it about the tips for virtual meetings. And here's also something uh, that I like to use to, to involve people and keep them active. Um, this is an example of a, a risk matrix, a project risk matrix. And as we can't do this risk assessment all together in front of a flip chart, I like to draw this um, uh, matrix here and then start working in life with the people moving um, the, the pictures around. And I will show you this here now, because for that I have to end the show. And then I can ask the people what risks they have identified. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, going back once again. Um, uh. I ask them what risks they have identified and then I can move them in the right box and it's easy to, to yeah, talk about it when they immediately can see what risks we have here. Good. Coming back to the presentation mode. In the next meeting it looks then like that. You can see the risks that we have identified. They are put in the different uh, boxes of the risk matrix aligned uh, based on the impact and on the likelihood. And what I can do then now is drawing with the, the PowerPoint tool, um, the right, uh, bringing them to the right section. So if something changed, um, that you really have, uh, uh, have it in the right uh, box again. And we can move it around, people can see the change and it's very obvious for them what the risks are. In another session, we can also cross something out and then it would look in the protocol like that. Good, but what does this mean for the project manager in general uh, for his meetings? I just uh, took some notes here. Um, so for the project manager working in a distributed team, it's very important that you really create the big picture and that everyone understands what the goals of your activity or project are and that everyone has understood the goals. So don't just accept a nodding from everyone, but really ask everyone to repeat uh, the goals in his own words 
and to ask the person also uh, what is his part of the, de de the delivery. So what, what is he doing that we as a team are achieving the goals. Then also important is to structure the work in a very clear way so that everyone knows who is doing what until when so that there is no confusion and people are not doing uh, things twice or more likely uh, things are not done at all uh, and clarify yeah, their roles and responsibility and with whom they have to talk or from whom they um, need to get an approval and so on um, yeah, that everyone really knows uh, what to do. Uh, it's also important to have a clear transparency so to have all the documents available in a central uh, uh, storage. I like to use uh, the, a SharePoint solution from Microsoft where you can easily upload and download and, and update documents. There's a version control in there. You can also create some lists uh, uh, with adding some workflows to notify people. So transparency is also very key. And for the meetings, it's extremely important that you prepare the meetings in detail and to do a very detailed post-processing. Um, because the meetings are the only uh, place where people are coming together in these virtual meetings. Of course, they are doing some one-to-one -one alignments uh, later on, but the things that are documented are uh, done in these meetings. These meetings also need a very good moderation and you have to be even more flexible than in physical meetings because you have all these things with the connection topics um, and yeah, not really seeing people. You can't see if someone is angry about what you said or if the person is happy about it because you often have just a very small picture. You should also do everything to support the interaction of the team members. So not just uh, talk, talk, talk and let the others listen, but really make them talk to each other. So also do not ask just for feedback that they should give to you, but support their interaction. So for example, really ask the people that someone presents the actual status of his work package, for example, and that the others are asking this person questions or um, you give feedback and the people should give feedback directly to another team member and not to you as a project uh, manager. This also goes in line uh, with a kind of a proactive communication so problems need to be anticipated so if someone is um, very quiet in a meeting um, this can have, of course, multiple reasons, but it's often good to ask this person to give a comment as well and to give a statement so that you know uh, if he's angry or what the actual problem is um, and that this person also said something and yeah, is not taking the problem home with him. Strengthening this, the team spirit is, uh, is important. So what can you do to strengthen the team spirit? Um, so one thing I like to do is to really ask the people um, of uh, for giving uh, at the beginning of a meeting some personal aspects. So um, asking them to tell the others something that the, the other team members for sure do not know. Start with an, a warm up uh, that everyone should describe his uh, favorite food or uh, public holidays in his or her country so that you get a bit of um, personal, personal aspects into this uh, very fact oriented meeting. And as you can't cover everything in these big virtual meetings, it's also very important and key for success to have a lot of one-to-one uh, -one sessions with the people um, to really get their opinion. Yeah, so what does it mean at the end? Um, for me, it means that you have to, to uh, that the things need to be done more conscious, and that as as well as you have to um, plan more in details, as these meetings uh, do not leave that much room uh, for flexibility 
and interaction. And yeah, with those tips, um, I wish you all the best for this Gecko competition. Please try out as much as possible. And I keep my fingers crossed that everything works uh, as you would like it to be. And if you have feedback or any comments, please just send me an email. Uh, I will get back to you. Unfortunately, this session had to be recorded, um, but I will reply to you as soon as possible. And I'm uh, open and happy for feedback. Good. Thank you very much. And enjoy Gecko. See you soon. Bye.